Peggy 16. original vision for Darksiders was, was pretty grand, and we weren't able to execute on that fully in Darksiders 1, but Darksiders 2, a lot of the stuff we really wanted to have in there, like loot, like skill trees, leveling up, a big world that you could explore at your leisure, getting new abilities that allow you to then see more of that world. We get to do a lot of that in Darksiders 2, and we're really excited about it. When we were coming up with the loot for the game, we had a lot of fun. We knew the weapon types and the armor and stuff that Death would wear, but obviously we want to have a lot of variety and allow people to really make their guy look different from their friends. Let me tell you about loot. It's the best new feature we're adding to Darksiders 2. You get to pick whatever gear you want to use. Do you want to use a heavy axe? Do you want to use a faster set of claws? Do you prefer extra fire damage? Do you want added strength? Do you want added stamina? There's got to be thousands of pieces of loot. I mean, not as there are a bunch of visual combinations, there's a bunch of statistical combinations. Of course, you're going to find just common stuff, and then you're going to start to find some that have magical properties. You're going to get some that really are loaded up with stats, and eventually, our top tier loot is called possessed weapons, and those are going to be a lot of fun because they stay with you, and you're actually able to take items that you found, and you can feed those items into the possessed weapon to increase their power. Essentially, the possessed weapons level up with you based on how often you feed them with the loot that you don't want anymore. And I think it's that tier of loot that we're introducing that's going to be the most exciting. In Darksiders 2, we've got a skill tree. There are two major sides. You've got the Necromancer side and the Harbinger side. The Harbinger is more warrior-based, melee, in your face, hand-to-hand -hand combat, weapon-based combat. Necromancer is your spellcaster. Your big nukes, fire, arcane, lightning, all that cool stuff. There's certainly not a chance to just stand in one place in Darksiders 2. The characters are more aggressive in this game. They're kind of up on top of you very quickly. So one, you have to think a lot quicker than you did on the first one. But because you've got so many different tools to handle that combat now, players can handle it in a lot of different ways. They can hold back and use a lot of the magic if they're not very good at the, the melee combat, but you can also get in and get through from a, a very like up-close and personal style of gameplay. So it's really down to the type of player who's playing the game. It's absolutely worth playing the game for the second time. We hold back some of our really, really high-end powerful loot items for the second route through. There are quests that are going to force you to explore the world into nooks and crannies you didn't even know existed and to go down through some pretty serious content. And some are funny, some are serious, but there's a lot to see. It sort of harkens back to the elements that were special in old school games. That's what we really wanted to pack into Dark Shadows 2. We want people to sense our passion. It's a game made for gamers by gamers.